show, I'm a bulldog. So Georgia, who I'm picking? I love the family atmosphere and the way they handle business. Education is important. What's up, Dog Nation? It is before the hedges. It is Wednesday night. We are in the house. G Day is upon us. This is G Day Eve, 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 or something like that. Um, we've got a special hashtag girl dad edition of Before the Hedges tonight brought to you by Kroger. Why am I dropping the hashtag girl dad? Girl dad? That's because normally we love this show when it's live, but we cannot be a five star dad tonight. Um, my daughter, Hannah, taking her a couple of teenage girls. Uh, to a concert tonight in Midtown. It is tonight. It is at uh, Center Stage, I believe, uh, the Loft. So will not be in. I'm not in studio live. Not streaming live for those who want to get your questions in. But we have a Keith Jackson Slobberknocker type show for you guys today. What's happened since the last time we went on uh, before the hedges and got on that Wednesday night live air? Well, a lot. Matt Zollers. He's a Missouri Tiger. He's the first Missouri Tiger in the class. Still haven't seen another one follow Matt Zollers as of yet. Mason Short is a dog, probably worthy of Dog of the Week honors for what he did last week with his commitment ceremony. We'll talk about that in our show. Uh, G-Day's coming up. Who's in town? Who's not in town? That's what we'll talk about tonight as we get into our big five here on Dog Nation, you want a Dog Nation conversation with the number one play, number one junior prospect in the state? We got that. You want more Mason Short? We got that. You want Mason Short clips with him and his pet tree? Sure you do. Bet you want all that tonight on uh, Before the Hedges brought to you by Kroger. So buckle up, uh, take a knee, and let's talk about all things Georgia football recruiting right now. All right, first up. Uh, and we, we just got to have fun with this one. I, I think, let me set the stage with, I was there, uh, our fabulous producer, Miss Kaylee Mansell was there last week. We were on location, uh, at Evans high school. We were, we saw the huge night at Evans night at, for the Evans nights. We were in their auditorium. It was a packed house to watch Mason short choose Georgia or Clemson, Ohio state. And I guess uh, Kentucky were also uh, in the mix there as well. But uh, before we jump into this, Kaylee, I want I want to hear from you right now. You were there. You you've only got maybe five commitment ceremonies max under your belt so far at Dog Nation. What was your what was the what was the part of Mason Short's commitment that you will always remember? Like what was that feel good feeling afterward? So the thing I remember most is the person who was in charge of his music music actually told me beforehand that he was going to be playing a song for his commitment, but I thought it might be like Baba O'Reilly or Back in Black. I was not expecting Georgia on my mind. I've been waiting on that moment to happen, but I'm just a sucker for emotion. So the song was great, but I will never forget watching his mom start to cry before any words were even spoken because it's like, as a mom, I can't imagine how proud you must be of your son because you've done everything that you can do to get them to that point and hearing how everybody talk about how he wasn't just a great athlete but also a great person. I know for a mom, that has to go a long way. Wow. Great answer, man. Kaylee looks like she's trying to trying to trying out for Miss Georgia when she's in high school, man. Maybe tried to win Miss Rome or something like that from back in the day. Great Q&A there. What's Kaylee talking about, about that Ray Charles moment? Let's take a look at this right now. I had a front row seat. Mason had told me what was kind of coming down the track prior to that moment. Let's take a look at Mason Short. Let's have a Dog Nation Before the Hedges replay from last week at Evans High School. With that being said, um, <laughs> I'll be continuing my athletic and academic career at Look at that. So you got to cry, Mom. That's always great when you want to have a great commitment ceremony. Yeah, it was funny. His trainer, Ryan's trainer, excuse me, Mason's trainer, uh, was a former contestant on The Bachelor. He he basically brought out the X, Y, and Z about Mason as a person, his character, what's he like off the field, type of hard worker he is. And then his mom, 
a fifth grade teacher in the Evans community. Been teaching uh, fifth grade for 23 years in Evans High School. That just may, in that Evans Middle School, excuse me, Evans Elementary School. Fifth grade is middle is elementary school, middle school. But um, let me stumble over those semantics a little bit. What I wanted to get to, I wanted to put that one fresh in your mind, and I wanted to start this topic off right because, man, I folks, I've probably been to let me see, I probably go to twenty of these a year across maybe like what is it, seven, eight, nine years now. So I've probably been to like 150 like minimum commitment ceremonies maybe, uh, ballpark in that, uh, even prior in my career. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the Mason Short uh, commitment ceremony kind of firmly inside my top 10 uh, best ones I've ever had. And I kinda, I'm going to say, I'm going to call it a commitment moment. So this is kind of a, a call to action for everybody out there. I want you to run through your memories. I've got a bunch uh, that I'm going to just rattle off. But I, when I think of your favorite uh, commitment moment, I want you to tell me about which ones really stand out. Now, we're at this show, Team Dog Nation. We like to let our work speak for ourselves. So we're not going to brag on ourselves. We had the uh, Jeremiah Holloman, uh, Malik Herring, Jake Fromm, Richard LeCount, Santa, uh, commitment video. We had Kendall Milton. We had Jamari Salyer looking like the Source Awards. We've had a bunch, but I'm going to exclude all of our Dog Nation um, products from that just to be fair and biased and, and non-biased and very objective here. So uh, the ones that come to my mind that I thought were some of the best commitment moments of the Kirby Smart era – uh, I think one of the first ones that comes to my mind is DeAndre Swift, if everybody remembers that one. That was the one that it looked like uh, he's from Philly. It looked like he had some Meek Mill in there, of course, bonus points for that. But he had a really original idea. He was running through the streets of Philadelphia like Rocky did, you know, running up to the statue, running through the streets of Philadelphia, running by Geno's cheesesteaks, and then he met up with his family, his dad. They're a bunch of motorcycle enthusiasts. T-Rexes and everything else like that. They kind of came together. They had a drone shot with the G in the middle. That one is way up there for me. Everybody remembers Quay Walker, him tossing the hat, uh, the Tennessee hat, and his family all unzipping the power G. I think some people had some very fun uh, videos on social media with that hat kind of going across the across the globe, going by uh, the seven wonders of the world, going by Christ the Redeemer, going by the pyramids of Giza uh, in Egypt. So everybody had fun with that. you got to also mention Isaiah Wilson. Uh, seems like 2017, 2018 was the sweet spot for the commitment moment era. But uh, Isaiah Wilson finally committed to Georgia amongst what felt like a, a, a maybe a Ken Burns Civil War miniseries in terms of it was in the middle of a Christmas pageant and he commits to Georgia. That was an excellent one. Uh, you got Monroe Freeling in recent years waving the Georgia flag. We went down to see Tyler Williams, and he had a live bulldog as well. Of course, Elijah Holyfield has done a live bulldog. Isaiah Crowell did a live bulldog. Um, you've also got last year, I thought a very original one last year, Chauncey Bowens, the 2024 Georgia signee, who will be an early enrollee showing off his stuff at G-Day on Saturday. He made his commitment flip in the middle of a photo shoot. It was recorded. It eventually went on social media and went crazy. That's one that stands out. So there's a lot of memory jogs right there. Um, and, you know, hey, I'd, I'd love to – Kaylee, I know you're listening in. I know you're punching all the buttons on the show. What do you feel like your favorite commitment moment, Georgia-ish, that you can recall? Is there one of those that stands out for you? I know we said we weren't going to give shout-outs to Dog Nation, but I think that this counts because I wasn't a member of Dog Nation when I saw this, so I, I feel like I'm excluded from this narrative. I loved the Malik Herring Christmas video when he brought in Jake Fromm. I thought that was very original around the holiday season. It really got me in the spirit, and so I have to say that, or I'm always a fan of the classics. The baby bulldogs get me every time. Ah, uh, that get, that's the all moment right there. Thank you, Kaylee. Uh, yeah, that was, that was a cool story. One of these days we might have, we might have Malik and J JJ and Jake Fromm and Richard on, uh, before the hedges and talk about maybe 10 year anniversary of that one. Uh, maybe it's coming up in about three or four more years, but, 
Um, that would be a really cool moment. Folks, love to see you in the comment section. If there's a commitment ceremony that is near and dear to your heart, where do you have Mason Short among the most memorable moments for you? Uh, commitment moments in Dog Nation or Kirby Smart Georgia history. Uh, if there's one that sticks out, drop it in the comment section below because that's what we are all talking about today. Number two on our Dog Nation Before the Hedges Big Five. It's kind of like what we're here for. That's what the title of the show is. Uh, there's been some early RSVPs for G Day already. And folks, this is not going to be massive, monumentally mammoth. It's not going to be uh, the gates of Sta Sanford Stadium are going to bust wide open with five stars on Saturday. But it is still a very strong list, especially one particular name that we're still kicking the tires on. But according to our information as we're taping this, we expect five-star USC commitment Justice J. Terry, I guess you guys probably were wondering if I was going to say five-star USC commitment. Julian, Juju Lewis, we got a couple of pages here of what, what's going on. Here are the early ones that we've seen so far, the G-Day visitors for April 14th. Got to love those. Got to love those graphics right there. Let me see. A couple of things that stand out there. Justice Terry, the USC commitment. Number two defensive tackle, number eight overall. You got Elias Williams out of Camden County in Kings, a number one tight end, number 20 overall. He's a Georgia commit. He's still expected to be there. Um, Dijon Lee Jr., he is not a UGA commitment right now. He is very much undecided, um, but uh, bear with us on that. But he is a UGA commitment uh, potentially down the road, but definitely not anytime soon. But Georgia, he's named them off as one of his top schools, and Georgia's right up there with Alabama. But Dijon Lee Jr., he's a, he's a five-star, uh, according to the 24-7 Sports Composite. He's expected back in Athens. Travis Smith Jr., he's planned this for a while, going back to like March, April. Um, I remember him telling me at the Atlanta Under Armour Regional he was going to be at Georgia for G-Day. Uh, Darren and Kingabon uh, out of Hillside, New Jersey, the number one player in New Jersey, according to some polls. He's going to be in town. Eric Winters, he's out of Enterprise, Alabama. He's a safety, top 100 overall prospect. He's undecided. Now, there's a lot of noise with Eric Winters and Auburn right now. So it will be, should Georgia decide that that's the guy they want, one of their DBs for the 2025 class. I think they're going to have a fight with Auburn, but if they want to win that fight, they need to have a great visit, a great game day experience in Athens on Saturday. Mason Short, we're going to mention his name a few times in our show. He told me he's going to be there as well. Uh, moving the list right here, we've got a second page of visitors right now. And you got some 2026 guys that to really take a look at. You've got a Georgia legacy in David Jacobs Jr., uh, he's up to it. He's not ranked yet, but trust me on this one, David's going to be a five-star. He's going to probably going to be a top 12, top 15 player when everything's said and done. He's about 6'3", 6'4", right now. His father, former Georgia defensive line great, David Jacobs, uh, he tells me that his son's probably up to about 215, 217 right now after his true freshman season at Blessed Trinity a year ago. Uh, he is undecided there. Uh, Nasir McCoy, really smooth-looking DB. I think this will be his third trip to Georgia in the manner of about maybe 12, 14, 15 days. He's at Buford High School. He's going to be watching K.J. Bolden, his former high school teammate, very closely. Um, he'll eventually, I feel, be a top 100 prospect when all said and done. And then the really two 2026s tw to look at right here, Jared Curtis, the five-star quarterback, the number one quarterback in the country for 2020. Uh, six, probably a big reason why that Matt Zoller's news isn't as isn't as dire uh, as, as some might thought. And then one more thing, I want to go back to this name right here. For me, I think this is the most intriguing visitor out of all of them, outside of maybe Justice uh, J. Terry, of course, another great visit for Elias Williams. But this name right here, Akeem Ogboko, he is out of Garner, North Carolina. This is the younger brother of uh, Georgia uh, freshman nose guard Nemandi Ogboko out of uh, North Carolina. He enrolled early. Well, younger brother is a four-star, but he's going to be a five-star. He's already rated 
among the top 15 players in the country at offensive tackle. You want to continue to have you know, younger brother follow older brother. Definitely very possible. The Nigerian um, connection at Georgia is really starting to populate with um, Joseph Jonah Ajanye. This guy right here is up to 6'6 plus, 285, already rated as the number three offensive tackle in 2026. You want to know how Georgia gets in good with a, a guy to protect Jared Curtis? Jared Curtis, I got to get in even better than they already are with uh, the brother of a current UGA freshman nose guard. This weekend is how you do it. So really interested in seeing the reaction from the Oboko family uh, coming out of that visit, not only how well their son played uh, on the field, but also what uh, his younger brother felt about that as well. So there you go. There's your early RSVPs, and it's kind of been a busy day on my phone, I think, since we started taping. I've seen a couple of RSVPs. Probably the biggest one I've seen so far is Ethan Barbour, the four-star uh, tight end, um, also plans to be in Athens with a very big group as well. So we'll we'll continue to update update that list. We'll have it up on dognation.com on the pages of dognation.com very shortly. But there he goes. That's a really quick read on some of the early RSVPs for G-Day. Might have a couple more. Might have a couple big more. We'll talk about that a little bit later in our show. Moving on to number three here. And this is something I feel like everybody needs an update on. Everybody needs a reset on. We're talking about quarterbacks. And everybody wants to know, hey, what's going on with quarterback? Matt Zollers is a Missouri Tiger. Is it Julian, Juju, Lewis, or Bust? Is Georgia going to be in the mix and maybe have to eventually close on Ryan Montgomery? Well, a lot of things coming and going here right now. As the recruiting folks like to say, this one is kind of like the Okoe River in Tennessee, some Olympic-level uh, whitewater rafting, have you. Um, some things going on. Number one, I think probably the most important thing to watch for Georgia in terms of both of those quarterbacks is what's going to happen beginning April 16th through April the 30th. That's the second transfer portal where everybody's coming out of spring practice. Georgia can kind of add some new names. Can, Georgia can kind of add some – players into the mix there and you know really everybody's watching the quarterback position because that's something that you know Julian Lewis and his family have asked me about they want to know they're going to watch and monitor and see you know what's going to happen there with uh, is Georgia going to get kind of a proven guy or are they going to get a young uh, guy to come in and from the portal to compete with Ryan Puglisi and Gunnar Stockton very be very interesting to take a look at that that will impact maybe what the quarterback room is going to look like I think Georgia will also probably look to, if they don't add the right quarterback to compete with Gunner and Ryan in 2025 uh, during the April portal window, I think that will happen in the December-January portal window after the 2024 season. But what I think it's going to boil down to is either Julian Juju Lewis or it's going to be Ryan Montgomery. Ryan Montgomery got some information regarding that decision. He's not going to wait on what's going to happen with Georgia and maybe Georgia to maybe feel out what's going on with the other quarterbacks that they're looking at. He's going to make a decision in early May. He's got a visit coming up later this month to South Carolina for their spring game. He just got back from Florida. And Ryan Montgomery, who used to have an official visit to Georgia, is slated for June. That one's off the board now. And he potentially, unless he chooses the dogs, has made his last visit to UGA. Uh, Ryan's going to make his decision in early May. He's going to feel good about it. And then he's going to take an official visit in May. And then he's going to come back in June with the school of his choice, be it Florida, Georgia, or South Carolina, for another unofficial visit in June to help build the class. But really, it kind of feels to me Georgia's got three options. They're going to play the long game with Julian Juju Lewis, five-star quarterback, a guy that can kind of compete with Gunner and uh, Ryan Puglisi right off the bat his first season at Georgia if he chose the dogs. And then you've got Ryan Montgomery, a guy that I'm still very high on. I like his game. I think he would be the easier fit in Athens. There wouldn't be a a question about does he get on the field early? How long will he stay? You know, Ryan's told me personally that he can see himself uh, doesn't mind getting better and waiting for a couple of years, maybe not as long as Carson, but definitely 
uh, for some significant amount of time before he's ready to come out and play. And I'll never forget when he told me, he's like, hey, when it's my time, I'm going to be developed to Georgia. I'm going to be ready, and I'm going to be play good football right out of the box like Carson did. So that's what's happening with the quarterback. If you had to sit there and go, what's most likely, I think most likely by a slim margin is probably Julian Lewis, and then it's probably split. Maybe this is a 40 – you know, a 40, 30, 30, 30 type thing between Ryan Montgomery or a portal quarterback that becomes Georgia's additional uh, arm that they're going to add uh, during the 2024 recruiting cycle. May not be the 2025, maybe not be the cycle because we're in the 2025 cycle, but the year 2024. That's what I'm thinking about quarterback. Um, let's see. Moving right along, number four on our before the Hedges Big Five brought to you by Kroger. Hey, I got a chance to hang out uh, over, the, over this past weekend with the number one junior prospect in the country. That would be Tyler Atkinson out of Grayson High School. He had 197 tackles a year ago as a sophomore. He's got a chance to probably finish his high school career with over 800, 900-something tackles. Um, tremendous player. Um, some sites have him as the number two linebacker in the country and a top 10 overall prospect. He's been to Auburn recently. He's been to Clemson. He's been to Ohio State. He's been to Georgia. Where are things right now with Tyler Atkinson? How does he feel about the dogs? We'll check out this Dog Nation conversation right now. Brought to you by Kroger. experience what has the last few visits taught you I know you try to learn something every time you go like what is the last round of visits showed you and what was it important for you to go see other schools again you know the reason why I'm going to all these schools and see work what, what can home be like I'm getting a feel of all these schools where can that be uh, how can I fit on a program how do they do their defense how's the coaches like how's the energy with players like I'm asking the players how do, what do they think about the coaching staff all that just questions so for me to ask so I can just narrow my list down and stuff and that's why I'm going to these visits for that you thought about a timeline yet you would you be you think you might be recruited this you might be committed this time next year or you got you want to take it a little bit farther than that uh you know right now I can't really say uh it's whatever I'm whatever whatever comes you know whatever my time but you know I want to be an early commit I want to be settled down but right now I just I, I don't know when I would do that <laughs> What are you really looking for? Have you, have you figured out some non-negotiables about the school that you're going to be acting up at? What's, what's that school going to have? Uh, the school just got to have hard workers. I love hard workers. I want the next guy to me to be the hard worker. So I don't want nobody just slacking off. I want everybody to be working. Because if you if you, you got a team, that, you got players on your team that's trying to go to the lead too, that's going to make everybody hunger to push each other and make each other work. So looking just for a good environment, good good everything. So that type of stuff I look for as a school, a good coach and staff and a good, yeah. Tyler, you just visited Georgia like last week, right? Did you catch them in a padded practice? Yes, sir. What was that like? Can you recant your experience? Uh, it was very good. You know, every everything, every time I go there, it's very good energy, good vibes. Uh, the players is like, everybody, players know me a lot. Everybody comes, a lot of, most of the players come and dat me up and got beat her a lot. So it's like a lot of players, I'm, I know a lot of players, a lot of players know me. C good coach and coach shoes, one of the best coaches to do it. Uh, Kurt Smart, always get on his players, always trying to correct his players to make a national cha championship team. So it was just a good vibe up there. Tyler, what do you think it is you like best about Georgia? You must have been there, what, 10 times already? 12 times already? How many times have you been there? Uh, probably like I, like seven, six, seven. What do you think it is you like best about that opportunity there? Oh, uh, you know, I just like the good coaching up there. Good coaching, you know, and Georgia recruits very good. They have a good D-line for I really look on... I, but I go. I look. Always look for that D line. I, I, I gotta have a good front for me so I can be able to read good and see good. So what is a, um, if a double team me, let my brother free. So just like all that. So if the front good, I like that. I, I like the size on the front. So that that can help me with my linebacker skills. So that's what I like. I like to see the size. I like the good players, good coaching, all that. Schumann, what's his latest message to you? What's he tell you? Does he say like? Anytime you're ready, does he say, like, you know, answering all your questions? Like, what's his message to you about why Georgia wants you? 
uh, his message to me why Georgia wants me is like he, he just he know I, I'm I'm a hard worker and he's a hard worker. He has hard working players on the team, you know. He 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 has good lbs, so it's like he just he wants the best on his team too. So it's always it's always good vibes up there, you know. You never want a coach to just a, like the just make you seem like you just all that and then switch up and we go there. So he, he coach you just keeps it real. So that's what I like about him. Tyler Atkinson, man, appreciate it. We got him acting up with the young people today. Up, let's do it. Fourth graders to the eighth graders. He had about 60 kids today. And now they're all form tacklers. Now they're going to go to their, their middle school coaches. And they're going to say, hey, man, I learned how to do this at the acting up camp. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so there's Tyler Atkinson. First of all, if you're wondering where he was at, uh, he, he hosted, and this is a great side of NIL, folks. First of all, Atkinson's a great young man, hard worker. You mentioned, you heard him mention hard worker, hard being around hard workers is one of his non-negotiables. Uh, I've been watching this young man since like late seventh grade. I saw him showing up at camps and um, kind of making some eighth and ninth graders look foolish. Um, such a hard worker. He's a protege of former Georgia uh, defensive end specialist Marcus Howard. Uh, knows pass rush. Uh, knows how to get after the football. Kind of a really strong athlete. He's about six two and a half, maybe. 205 right now, uh, and he held a, he held a camp. Everybody talks about how you know NIL is kind of a dirty word, especially in high school football. Well, this was an example with a really positive spin from Tyler and his family. They used his platform and they used some of his his NIL sponsorship with a uh, leading uh, football equipment uh, maker uh, provider, and they gave away a bunch of helmets. They gave away some shoulder pads. They gave away a lot of gear. They had the pads out. I believe every camper there left with something, I was told. And they all had about 90 reps on the tackling dummy. Um, really worked on speed work, a lot of things. And that was Tyler and his family's way to give back. Now, they had to charge a fee of, I believe it was $50. Had, that kind of covered paying for staff, also renting out the fields. And then also they had a lot of, a lot of food there for everybody as well. But also really cool moment of the camp is they had a, he had a partnership with Northside Hospital, their Concussion Institute, and uh, they was really to give some continuing education and some literature and some uh, expert advice about concussions, how to be prepared, how to get baseline testing. So Tyler Atkinson, they call it acting up, and acting up really means hard work, being about your business, being about your future. He is a fantastic player in the class of 2026. The dogs really want him. Did you see he mentioned Coach Glenn Schumann very importantly? Um, while we mentioned Schumann on the show, we got to say congratulations to Shu as well. Um, he announced sort of subtly on social media that they were expecting uh, another addition to the Schumann family. So maybe that's another reason for the Schumanns to stay a couple more seasons uh, in Athens as well. But talk about a major target for the 2026 class. That, my friends, is Tyler Atkinson. Now, number five in our Dog Nation Big Five. You know, we had some Mason Short content earlier in our show, but I got – Two pieces for you today, tonight, this evening. First of all, I've kind of broken up our Dog Nation conversation into one part that I know you guys are not going to forget, and then another part, which is Mason Short, um, who he is, who he's all about, why he chose the dogs. Let's start off with this one. This is probably the one you're going to remember. When I saw it, when he talked to me about it, I thought of Rocky in Russia training for Ivan Drago and Rocky IV. Why in the world, you're asking yourselves, is Jeff talking about a movie that came out, I believe, in 1984, 30 years ago? Well, when you see this clip right here on Before the Hedge is brought to you by Kroger, you'll know why. You are literally walking through the woods. There's this big tree that's like twice the size of you. You're basically <laughs> pressing it over your head, behind your back. You're doing squats with it. Is that like a pet tree you have that you work out with? What's that story? <laughs> I guess. Uh, some of my buddies were visiting college, and they wanted to go fishing. And uh, so I saw it, so why not lift it? So that, that's that's what that was. It almost took a, you know, you won't do it. And uh, so the shirt came off, and I started squatting and pressing it. How much do you think it weighs? Uh, honestly, I know it looks a lot more than what it probably was for maybe like 185, something like that. But, yeah, again, just using nature to your advantage. Is that in your backyard? Where's that at? Where's that tree located at? In the pond now. So, you threw uh, it in the pond? In the pond, because I'm pretty sure the fish could use that more than I could. So That's a Rocky IV workout, right? Have you seen the movie Rocky IV by any chance? <laughs> Absolutely, yes, that's sir. That's an Ivan Drago workout. <laughs> that's what we, that's guys, that's what we, uh, 
If you had if you had Ivan Drago on your uh, before the hedges bingo card today, there you go. Uh, really love that story. Really love that moment. Getting the chance to talk to Mason about that shows his love for the outdoors. How he threw it into the pond to create a kind of a habitat for fish inside of his backyard pond. That pond is where he made his decision to choose to Georgia. He was very, um, very much alone in the woods with solitude. Uh, he, he prayed about it. He thought about it. Georgia became his choice. And then um, he went and you know talked to his family about it. And it, more came out of that. About two weeks after that, we're all in Evans watching him play some Ray Charles and commit to the dogs. That's how quickly it came together. This is a young man that doesn't like recruiting, but you know what he does like? Family, football, basically knocking that other guy's teeth out or into the ground, knocking that other guy into the ground. Check out our Dog Nation conversation here on Before the Hedges, brought to you by Kroger with Mason Short. Um, probably my relationship with Coach Serrells. Um, we have a great bond, and of course, which this narrative has been pushed down my throat since I was 15 years old. That Georgia is in my backyard, of course. You know, it's only an hour and a half in away, and uh, you know, just it's it's Georgia. You know, they, they have the history, they have the coaches, the players. They're always going to have that. Um, and, and knowing that, you just can't go wrong. You know, um. You, you know they're gonna they're gonna bring guys in to make you better, and they expect you to make their guys better. So they're gonna want to bring in guys that just help each other. Um, you know, hold each other accountable. That's one thing I love about Coach um, Sarrells is that how he lets his guys hold each other accountable. Not necessarily him just yelling yelling at them 24/7. He's gonna let his guys. You know, if he messes up on a play, he'll wait a second and make sure his guy will tell him, "Hey, you did that wrong. Get it right." And uh, going to Coach Smart, you know. His coach smart, great guy, great coach. That's just someone who you want to play for. So uh, that that would ultimately lead to my decision if I were to pick Georgia. Um, you know, it's great, it's cool, great fans, great atmosphere, and that's just a place that any player would want to be at. Uh, Mason, I can't help but think of maybe three or four years ago when I talking when I'm talking to you and when I talk to Tate. Yes, sir. Uh, I think smart football players they look for a player at the school they're considering, and they go. Okay, that might be me. You know, Tate's kind of got the build you do. Yes, sir. Tate started out as a tackle. I know tackle guard might be a question for you to figure out yes, in sir. college, but like some kids want to play right away and they'll do whatever. Yes, sir. Um, other guys have they're stubborn. They want to be a tackle, and a more power to them because that sort of stubbornness is what you need in college football to be great. But Absolutely. Is Tate a guy you look at and say his path? Could could be like mine if I were you a little bit. Absolutely, you know Tate's an amazing player. He's he's had a great years his great years at Georgia, um, you know. And of course we have that relationship. He's a big big uh, you know fisherman and, and a hunter. So on our, on our visits we talk about a lot about turkey hunting and fishing. So we we've had that bond built for a couple of years now. But uh, going going to the tackle guard standpoint, I, I mean I'm gonna be my own player. Um, you know that's what a lot of fan, Georgia fans compare me to as Tate. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna be my own guy. So whatever I can <clears throat> bring, contribute to the team as tackle, guard, center, wide receiver, I don't care. Whatever, whatever I can bring to the table to help, that, that's what I'm gonna do. The hierarchy is help the team get on the field first rather Absolutely. than anything else, right? Yes, sir. Um, <coughs> Mason, I gotta ask you this. Uh, well, I got two more here on video. One, you just shared an amazing story with me about an heirloom, an uncle, a hat. Um, people might see that tomorrow and they might think, oh my gosh, that is a total old school hat. You might be wearing it, your mom might be wearing it, but yes, sir. why does that mean so much to your family the way that unfolded for you there? That That's who and what I put first in, in my life is family. That's how it should be. Not money, not anything else. Because uh, th those are the people who have been with you since day one, since you had no value to you, just other than being a human. They've been with you since you were a baby, and they supported you and fed you. So why not have them in everything that you do? And uh, that's my plan is just to retire my mama. That's the first thing my paycheck's going to go to. Um, retire my dad. He's worked his butt off for me, putting food in my mouth and a roof over my head. So and that's, that's ultimately what, what, it's, what I'm about and what it's going to be about forever is family. Mason, i got to ask one last thing about your mentality on the field when people watch your tape. If we were reading your mind over the course of play after play, like what's going through your mind about the way you go about your business? Uh, this kid's gonna hate me toward the end of the game. Um, I, I love it, you know, see, seeing a kid defeated. I, 
one of the best moments of my life. I won't expose him or too bad, but uh, that he asked to get out of the game because I was you know, I was making his night a lot worse than what it already was. So there's I've, I've heard a lot of lag coaches through a lot of years. There's obviously pancake blocks. There's run and tell your mama blocks. Yep, yes, sir. I've heard like obliterator blo blocks. I think you have something where you like to belly flop on dudes or something oh, yeah. like that. What is it called? Is that a mason? Is that a mason jar? Like, what do you call that? It's the get off my field. That's what it is. Um, that's just the ultimate little punishment, you know, the little push after the after the play's over with. But uh, again, that that's what's gonna happen. When, whatever college I go to, fans can expect that. Um, I might get a couple penalties, not holding, but maybe just a little uh, jawing after the play. That's just that's just how I raised how I was raised to be competitive and nasty. So uh, I'm going to keep that going. And then afterward, God-fearing young man, you're on your knees, you're prayerful. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. You're in bed by 8.30. That's, a, that's like a yeah. Jekyll and Hyde-like look there, isn't it? Yes, sir, absolutely. That's, you know, again, that's what you got to be is that mean monster on the field. And people don't want to – you don't want people to recognize you off the field. And there's no way, you know, you, you see – you see a, you're going to get the kid Friday night and you'll see him in the store the next day and you're nice to him. Like, man, you're not the kid that I saw on the field that day. That's just that's how it should be. You gotta treat people with respect, and uh, just on that field, that just is, it's a new level. So, like that, huh? Competitive, nasty. Talking about the other, the mentality when the guys lined up across from him, he's like, "I want you, to, I want you to get off my field." A uh, lot of plays of from Mason Short. I watch him. I watch him. I call them oof blocks because there's not only oof because it makes the dude feel bad because he's getting put into a blender, but it also is out of frame for the fans with acronyms. There's a lot of blocks he's making where if you want to zoom in on that coach's film and get that block up close, well, he's going to push his guy out of the frame because that's what he wants to do. He wants to give his guy the business. He said competitive and nasty. That's just how Mason Short was raised. That guy committed to the dogs last Friday at a ceremony in front of his school. Let's talk about our question of the week time right now. It's G Day week. It's got to be a G Day question. I know Kaylee would not let me put up any question this week that didn't have to do with G Day and recruiting. And the question this week is: we we dropped the list. Uh, we talked about the early elite visitors who have RSVP'd. I want to know this, folks: what recruit do you wish would make a G Day appearance? Do you want to see? You want to make sure Elias Williams is there. You want to make sure Justice J. Terry is there. What about Elijah Griffin? What about Zayden Williams, Julian Juju Lewis, or how about the five-star David Sanders Jr.? Lots of names right there to think about. I think I'm going to guess this one. I'm going to make a prediction here that I'm going to guess a lot of our commenters on Facebook and on YouTube uh, and the Dog Nation homepage, I'm going to bet that they would like to see Probably Justice J. Terry, if they're thinking with their heads, just to make sure he shows up to start that pivot, potential pivot away from the bright lights of Los Angeles, California, back to his homegrown state of Georgia. But I believe there's also some folks out there that are going to pick with their hearts, and they're going to say that they want a five-star quarterback, Julian Juju Lewis, um, uh, to make his way to Sanford Stadium on Saturday. You know, Kaylee's so good with graphics. I might start some weeks, maybe a monthly weather report for recruiting, and we'll have a state map, and we'll have, like, where it's hot and where it's cold, and, like, we would have a lot of flames right now uh, for Georgia in Southern California because that's where the dogs are fighting recruiting battles. They're waging war. They're actually waging war inside their home state uh, with some invaders from California for that, but... Love to see comments. Love to see interaction. If you could wave your magic wand and have anybody in the house for Sanford Stadium on Saturday for G-Day, who would it be for you guys? All right, guys, moving on. Uh, we call this each and every week. We, uh, we, the, we, have, we call these the table stakes, I believe, in my never-ending quest to have a different term each and every week for Miss Kaylee. Uh, I believe I call this the pancakes and syrup of our show today. Let's take a look at that commitment board because it is a plus one. Georgia picked up a commitment very recently. We talked about that commitment last Friday from Mason Short out of Evans High School. That now moves the number of offensive commitments up to four. 
for our top targets, excuse me, on our class breakdown. You see Bo Walker right there. Bo's busy playing baseball. Elias Williams, the five-star out of Camden County. And then Ethan Barbour, I mentioned earlier in the show, got an RSVP this afternoon that Ethan Barbour, the Barbour family was going to be coming strong about five deep into Athens on Saturday for G-Day. You see there the offensive line category. The he's Mason now is rated as an interior offensive lineman. He plays left tackle for um, Evans High School. Can see him kind of trying it out and see what works. We remember we brought up the name Tate Ratledge a lot when we think about Mason Short. Tate Ratledge was an offensive tackle, top five offensive tackle, top fifty overall prospect when he came into Georgia. And Tate has a classic story that it needed about one practice for him to say. Trying to block, you know, Aziz Ojolari, uh, you know, Nolan Smith, um, guys like that. Um, Tate was actually not there when Aziz was there, but he said he started trying to have to block some of Georgia's guys that were coming in off the edge. Robert Beal, and he's like, yeah, uh, yeah, probably I need to be a offensive guard. Uh, that's how much heat was coming off the edge uh, for Georgia with guys like Nolan, guys like Trayvon, things like that. So. Right there is your breakdown on offense. Let's check out the defense right now. Stephon Shivers is kind of anchoring things right there up front. Stephon just recently picked up his fourth star from ESPN, the six foot four, three hundred and fifty five pounder. Love that story I heard from his family about uh, going back to July twenty eighth. He camped in Athens. Uh, Trey Scott basically fell in love with Stephon Shivers. And so did Stephon Shivers in Georgia. There's been a connect ever since right there. Jaden Perlotti also, he has named his five official visits. Georgia's getting one of those. The longtime commitment in the class, that's somebody that I think it would be a good sign for the dogs if Jaden Perlotti would also be in Athens Town on Saturday as well. Let's take a look now at the recruiting snapshot. We've got some good news to report. We're speaking of a weather map earlier. Uh, Georgia has moved up its recruiting ranking. They're no longer the number 17 class. And what's happened since uh, the commitment of Mason Short with other schools, other programs, is Georgia now moves up to number 15 in the country. Uh, nationally, that's on the 24-7 sports team composite rankings they have. They go up to six commitments. They're, they're number 15 nationally. I believe they, got, they fell all the way to 18 at one point prior to – Mason's commitment, four on offense, two on defense. There's one out of state. Uh, there's four in state. Um, six commitments that are in the uh, SEC footprint right there. The state with the most commitments would be uh, the state of Georgia. Um, Five-star commitment now. There's just one after Mr. Terry made his decision. That's Elias Williams. That's also the only top 50 commit. Uh, two top 100 commits. Uh, that would be... Uh, Jaden Perlotti, and also Elias Williams. Those two are also the only top 150 as well. So right there is your recruiting snapshot. Let's take a look right now at our top targets for the 2025 class, and we have some names falling off. Mason Short's no longer on there. Matt Zollers is no longer on there. Let's start off with a young man out of Indiana. I think this is a before the hedges first here. Never seen back-to-back -back prospects out of Indiana Perhaps that has something to do with Nitro Showtime Tuggle of a year ago, choosing the dogs out of the Hoosier State. But Marion Dye, big framed edge uh, out of Indiana. He likes the dogs a lot. Eugene Hilton Jr., that's the legacy T.Y. Hilton son right there. New name here on the list, Kalen Edwards. There's some synergy going on right there between Kalen Edwards and Dyersburg, Tennessee. Folks, that's almost in like... It's like an hour or so above, 78, 80 miles above Memphis, almost in like Missouri and Arkansas. He's a former Auburn commitment. Shivers and Edwards. Could Georgia go to the state of Tennessee and pull another two defensive linemen? That's kind of shades of that Tennessee trio when Trey Scott went and got Zion Logue, and he also got uh, Big Bill Norton as well out of the state of Tennessee. Georgia actually pulled – Three defensive linemen in the class of 2019, I believe, uh, out of that class. You got Bryce Davis out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Dijon Lee, undecided commitment here. Let me stress that. He's a four-star for some, services a five-star for others. Expected to see Dijon Lee in Athens on Saturday. We have Julian Lewis at number 10 on this list. 
Darren at King of the Bond, he's out of Hillside, New Jersey. Big six foot six, two hundred and forty pounds, can really set the edge. A lot of physical traits there. Uh, he's coming in at number nine. He's going to be in Athens on Saturday for a trip he has planned from quite some time. Then you got Juan Gaston Jr., the big man out of Westlake. I believe he just visited Tennessee with his high school teammate Travis Smith Jr. last week. I believe David Sanders was with, was with those guys as well. Those are your top – that's 15 through 8. Now let's take a look at number 1 through 7. And, folks, these names right here, I believe – will determine whether or not Georgia will have the number one class in the country and repeat that way in 2025 like they were in 2024. Cortez Smith, he's got an official visit planned, um, I believe, for June 21st in Athens. Uh, Cortez will not be in Athens this weekend. He's got he's got uh, track, high school track at Parkview High School as well. Number six, C.J. Wiley. I believe C.J. Wiley is just coming off a, an official visit to um, Auburn, over the past weekend, he also recently saw Texas A&M. Uh, he's going to visit Georgia on the second, uh, the second weekend, which is actually the f- second weekend in June. Travis Smith Jr., we mentioned him earlier, Westlake High School. He's in Athens on Saturday. Zayden Walker, Zayden Walker was just in Miami. That bout right there is turning into a Georgia-Miami fight there. Florida State's kind of falling off there, so it looks like the chief competition for Georgia for the number one linebacker in the nation on some services, number two in others, Zayden Walker out of Sly County in Ellaville. Number four, Justice Terry, expected visitor this weekend. Elijah Griffin out of Savannah, Georgia's number two. And then David Sanders Jr., not expected in Athens this weekend. He's expected to go back to Tennessee for the second straight week for their spring game. Uh, this weekend right now. Those are your top early targets. Now let's take a look at just off the list for the 2025 class. This one's kind of growing because you look at this list, there's a lot of names to look at right there. Zaire Addison um, out of the Tampa area, he just scheduled an official visit to check out Georgia in May. Nikolai Brooks out of Iowa was at St. Francis in Alpharetta for a little bit, also at Buford for a little bit. He's got his official visit on that last, that kind of bridge weekend, May, June, um, coming up next month. Thomas Blackshear out of Savannah, Georgia. Javon Boggs out of Cocoa, Florida. Michael Fossey out of Louisville, Texas. That's another guy. Very impressive uh, offensive line target there. Anquan Feagans out of Alabama. Been on this list for a while. That's another name that, you know, Georgia could you really see could really benefit from him being in town for GJ G Day. Henry Finuku out of Fort Worth, Texas. Another another guy with the Nigerian background as well as Georgia is starting to become a, a program with uh you know African native African people with uh family descendants um from the continent of Africa. That's sort that's sort of gonna be uh Georgia's gonna be a, a destination spot because Georgia is getting a lot of success with those type of players. Uh, Christian Garrett out of Prince Avenue. Christian, a lot closer to home right there. Zion Grady, also out of Enterprise, Alabama. Uh, you know, a lot of noise right here now with him in Miami. Malachi Goodman, another guy that scheduled his official visit to Georgia over the last couple weeks or so. That's from Paramus Catholic in Paramus, New Jersey. That is the high school that sent the late uh, Devin Willick, hashtag do it for Dev, to Athens. And I think it's really Really something to see uh, another player from Paramus Catholic giving a very strong, hard look to the dogs. Again, Georgia and New Jersey, a lot of connections there as well. Let's move on to uh, the back half of just off the list. We're going to try and keep it to just two names. Ben Hanks Jr., Usmani Kroma, that's another guy that needs to get to Athens for the dogs to really start to do work there. Ryan Montgomery, we mentioned his story as well. Again, I know a lot of folks are going to think it's Julian or Buss, but really, I do feel like Ryan Montgomery could play good football at Georgia should he wind up in Athens. Um, going down the list here, you got Josh Petty. Josh Petty recently scheduled some official visits for the summer. Georgia was not one of those. Sounds like he's saving his official visit to Athens for the season. Uh Neat name to look at right there, Taylor Taylor as well out of Geneva, Illinois. Crazy to think that Georgia's kind of finding pockets of interest in the Midwest when it comes to the wide receiver position, not just the state of Georgia, not just Florida there as well. And then the last name on the list, 
Kevin Wynn kind of uh, kind of lining things up out of Green County, Greensboro, Georgia. Uh, big nose tackle target for Georgia there in the 2025 class. Guys, that has been your top targets. That has been your uh, commitment snapshot. We've rolled through our big five. Guys, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for joining us here tonight on Before the Hedges. I'm Jeff Sintel. That has been your intel. Go out there and lift some trees in your backyard, people. We'll see you guys again next week and later on the pages of dognation.com. Let's go. I'm a bulldog.